That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Thank you, Janet, and all of our musicians who help us lead us. Thank you. Wow, it's just hard to break thoughts, break thoughts. Um, we had, did have a great day yesterday. I know after the break, uh, we weren't able to do Winterfest because of the weather and that, that you know, but God always has other plans. And uh, His ways are not our ways. In, in fact, they're always better than our ways. So uh, the youth group met last night and had a house full of people at the shots. And, and uh, I don't know, I, did y'all survive? Where's is, uh, Amanda here? There, there's, okay. Did y'all survive? I know you had a house full. Well, yeah, we had a house full. We survived. The last person left at uh, 1115. Perfect. <laughs> now, it's funny though, that wasn't you, that was Claypool. <laughs> <laughs> That's our oldest teenager. <laughs> Listen, I'm excited about our youth group and our. So encouraged about our workers, our volunteers, our leaders, and God is doing a great thing. And so tonight, parents, I really want to encourage you to bring your teenagers, your students here at the mill, six o'clock. Uh, very excited about our youth group. And also, our ladies had a nice time last night. They made uh, some wreaths and had fun together. And, and I appreciate Carol's leadership and the ladies' ministry as well. Just, just want to highlight one thing coming up this Saturday. Really, our only event this weekend uh, on Saturday will be, we have this opportunity, it's in your bulletin, we have an opportunity to serve. You heard it, our special uh, announcement. We get to serve some, some uh, local heroes from, I believe, 11 to, uh, to 2, I believe, at the old Mount Pleasant Middle School, right up here. So if you can come and help us just serve, we're going to serve these, uh, these servants. And it's a great opportunity for us. And that's what, we are, that's what we're all about here in this church. We're a community church. So we get to come and serve. So I encourage you. Uh, Carol, wave that. Carol's in charge of that. So see Carol. Let her know you're going to come and help us. And it's going to be a, a great time together doing Christmas again together. Um, I want to talk to you today about a very special birthday. <coughs> and I want to start our Christmas thinking today. And I want us to get our minds right as we begin to go toward the countdown of the big day, you know, the 25th. And so I want us to start getting in our minds the concept of what this, this whole birthday thing is all about. And so our text today is Matthew chapter 1. It's a very, very familiar Christmas story. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And now as we, as we go there, I want to read to you Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. And, and, and we're talking about this birthday, which was very special. We're, we're talking about this plan that Janet's just saying about to us. This plan. And Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 and 5 kind of bring it into perspective for us. What Christmas is. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, so that we might receive the adoption of sons. And I love, I love the, this phrase, when the time was right. When the time was right, Christ became a man. In the fullness of time. It was perfect time. The first Christmas when Jesus was born. When the time was perfect, Christ became a man to fulfill the promises and make a way for us all to be the sons and daughters of God. But the time had to be right. And in all of history, in all of the future, in all of the ways that we keep time and celebrate and, and live our lives, this was just the right time when the fullness of, when the time was right, Christ became a baby. 
perspective about Christmas. That's what I want to talk about today. Let's think about birthdays. Think about your birthday. Think about what, what are some things that you have learned about your birthday? What are some things that you do? How do you celebrate your birthday? And, and, and that's why I want to talk about this really, really special birthday today that, that changed all of our worlds. Uh, tomorrow is a very special day. It's a special birthday. And someone here is celebrating their birthday tomorrow. And so, uh, I don't even see him. Cecil Moore has a birthday tomorrow. I don't know where he is. There's no telling where he is. He's probably out doing something. So, um, tomorrow is Cecil Moore's birthday. And, and is he there? I don't see him. Out front. Okay. So, when you see Cecil, say, Happy birthday, Cecil. What are you getting me for your birthday? <laughs> you like that. Um, to celebrate your birthday. So, you know, birthdays have become really special to us. And I, I like, I, I think it, it, it symbolizes that very special time when you came into this world. How, how old is baby Emery? Four months old. She's precious. She's beautiful. She had a birthday. And we're going to celebrate that birthday. And man, grandparents are going to really celebrate that birthday. And and so your birthday special. That's when we remember that time that you came into this world. Well, today we think about that real. I think it's good to celebrate. We have parties. We give gifts. Would you join me today as we learn and think and talk about a very <laughs> special birthday? Except in heaven, this birthday. Jesus' birthday had a very small celebration. It was rather obscure, to be honest with you. Few were even aware of this incredible event that would change our world. I, I, I think about when my grandbaby was born. You know, we, walk, we all kind of had the due date on our calendars. And we all kind of were scheduling and thinking, well, okay, now let's kind of be ready because we, when it's time to go to the hospital, see <coughs> this event, this baby that's going to come into the world. And then we got the call. And so we're heading over to the hospital. It's a big deal. I mean, there's people, there's, there's family members gathering and people are coming in. And it's a pretty special thing. It's a big deal. Well, here's this birthday of this little one and his name was Jesus. And let's read about it in Matthew chapter 1. Let's start with verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You know what? If you read that, you're kind of scratching your head and you're thinking, hmm, this is not normal. This is not a common birth. There's something, something different about this. Then, verse 19, Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Verse 20, but while he thought on these things, it was heavy on his mind. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And, and your name is significant. Your name means something. This name, Jesus. See, this wasn't a random name. Joseph and Mary didn't go get a, a book and look through it and say, well, what about this? I don't know. What do you think about that? Well, let's, what do you, I don't know. What do you want to name? It wasn't random. You're going to have a boy and you're going to call his name Jesus. You know why? Because he will save his people. <laughs> Now all this was done. So 
so that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. And you know what that means. Which being interpreted is God with Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, until she had brought forth her first from sleep, and he called his name Jesus. Though he was born King of kings and Lord of lords, there was no great fanfare as there is for famous and powerful people today. Let me catch you up a little bit and give you the order of events so you can get this in your mind as you're thinking about this very special birthday for the rest of this month. The first thing that happened was the birth of John the Baptist being foretold. See, there was a lot that went into this story. And so, before any of this started happening, the, the angel said there's going to be a birth, and his name's going to be John. And he's going to be special. He's going to have a very special task. And then, secondly, an angel announces the birth of Christ to Mary. And thirdly, Mary visits Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. And then, fourthly, John the Baptist is born. Important events leading up to this day. Number five, Joseph dreams. And an angel explains all of this to Joseph. It was all necessary. It was all just the right time. Number six, Mary and Joseph travel to Bethlehem. Number seven, Christ is born on that night. Number eight, the angels tell the shepherds of Christ's birth. Number nine, the shepherds find Christ in the manger. Number ten, Jesus is presented at the temple. <laughs> Number 11, wise men come and visit with this child. Number 12, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus flee from Herod into Egypt for the safety of the baby. Number 13, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus return and live in Nazareth. And the little boy begins to grow. The events leading up to this very special birthday. If you have your bulletin, uh, there's a little outline and you may want to follow, it may help you to jot down some notes or doodle or whatever it takes to keep you awake. You might want to do that. <laughs> Number one, there are several things I want to point out to you about this very special birthday. Number one, his birth was a humble birth. It was almost it, it was direct contrast to many births today. If you ever notice how when famous people have babies, oh, it, the tab, it's, it's, it's crazy, it's everywhere. It's all over the place. Pictures, I, the invasion of privacy, it's amazing. He was born in a stable. A barn. The lodging place of animals. Not a hospital. Or a nice fancy home. He was born in a stable. He would live in a poor village. Gifts came only from a group of wise men who traveled from the east. His stepfather was a carpenter. His mother was a peasant girl. Not royal. This king ruled the universe, yet his birth was very humble. He would heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. He would change the course of history. He would change the course of nature. He would save men and women from their sins and eventually judge all his babies that was born in such a humble way. Though many men and women have famous births, Christ's birth has never <coughs> been forgotten. And it never will be. Because he 
his birth was very special. Number two, number one, his birth was very humble. Number two, his birth was very unusual. In fact, everything about this birth was unusual. There was nothing normal about this baby's birth. At least 17 miracles accompanied his birth that we find in the scriptures. The angels spoke to men and women about his birth. The angels sang in heaven because of his birth. The angels appeared in dreams. There was nothing normal about this birth. God imparted special information about His birth by His Holy Spirit. Guided by a miraculous star, wise men came to worship this little baby. This was no normal birth. All these things signaled the entrance of God. Made as a man to dwell among them. The most unusual thing about his birth was its very nature. See, Christ was born of a virgin. That, that's never happened before. Because you see, scientifically, physically, it's impossible. Except for Jesus. His mother was a virgin. This is a very unusual birth. I'm not sure we, you know, we, we all, we quote, we hear baby Jesus born of a virgin. We sing about it. I'm not sure we fully grasp the significance of that fact. And let me talk about that for a minute. Isaiah had foretold this event 740 years earlier. It's a long time. He explained it in detail. God sent an angel to both Mary and Joseph to explain. The Holy Spirit would cause Mary to conceive and bear a son. And he would be the Son of God. Don't miss the significance of the virgin birth. You know, there are certain things that are... There are certain things that we believe or don't believe or positions that we hold that are important, but they're just not worth fighting for. Listen, there's a lot, we fight about stuff a lot of times that we don't, that's not worth fighting for. We sweat the small stuff sometimes. There's a lot of things that, that we talk about or read about or fuss about or argue about that are really not worth that. But there are some things that are worth believing and holding to because they're truths that are very important. And, and I present to you the fact that the Jesus was born of a virgin is one of those truths. Because Jesus' Father was not Joseph. Amen. That truth is important. That one is probably one worth hanging on to. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plant my flag right there. Because the virgin birth is pretty significant. Number three, his birth was very meaningful. It was humble was unusual and it was very meaningful. The virgin birth was one of the most important truths of the Christian faith. Now now listen to me. I want to I want to talk to you for a minute about truth. Because if church, if we can learn truth, we can learn to live in this world. We can learn to make good choices. We can learn to, to raise kids. We can learn to, to that how to make our marriage work. If we can grasp and listen and learn biblical truths. And this is an important one. Truth is an important idea that affects the way you think about Christ, 
others and the world in general. Truth. The ways you think are even more important than the things you do. Now that I know some of y'all, you're going that's gonna go right over your head. You're gonna not even remember that. That's important. The way you think and believe in your heart is even more significant than your actions. Because see, what you do doesn't get you to heaven. Are you with me? What we do, I don't know how, somehow we've, we've, we've been conditioned to think that we, well, I hope he was a good man. I hope he's, his good deeds outweighed his bad. And I, he just did so many good things. And that's really not as important as what he believed and what was truth to him. Don't misunderstand me. Our actions are important. They are. It's important how you live. But it's more important what you believe. And, and this is a truth. Don't miss this. This truth helps shape the way we think about Christ. God's Son. There, there's some lessons that I want us to learn today from this birth. Important lessons. Lesson number one is that the Bible is very reliable. This book is very... There's a lot of things you can't count on. There's a lot of things that you think you can, you try to, you want to, you want to put your hope in, you want to put your 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 future in, and you trust and, and you get let down. Men will do that. This book is true. Amen. It won't let you down. It's impossible for this book to let you down. And and the, the fact that Jesus was born the way He said He was going to be born to a virgin makes us know that this book is true and it's reliable. <laughs> Lessons from the virgin birth. Matthew 1, 22 and 23. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That was prophesied many, many years before. Had it not happened, then the book would not be reliable. But it happened just like it was presented. The, the, the virgin birth helps us understand that this book is reliable. When the Bible gives a prophecy and the prophecy is fulfilled, the reliability, the integrity of this book is confirmed. Amen. Listen, and I know this may not be the most exciting story you've ever heard of, about Christmas, but I'm going to tell you folks, this is important. You can... If all I do on Sundays is stand up here and make you laugh and make you feel good and tell you stories and I don't teach you the Bible, I'm not reliable. This book is reliable. You know, this church may not be the place for you. I, I, I'm good with that. But as a Christ follower, find a church that teaches the truth of God's Word. Line upon line, week upon week, word after word. Because that's all that matters. I have opinions. You have opinions. Guess what they're worth? 
<laughs> it's my baby. It's what is the thing that's important. Every. Every. Number two, I want you to know that this, the virgin birth was important because it teaches us that Christ loved us enough to become one of us. Can you, can you let that sink in? He loved us enough to become one of us. I want to read you a story, and I want to read it because I want to get it right. This is one of my favorite Christmas stories. You've probably heard this story. Uh, I, I heard it when I was a child many, many years ago. Um, You've probably heard it. Have you ever heard of Paul Harvey? Mm -hmm. That defines your age right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul Harvey used to tell us the rest of the story. And this is a story he told on Christmas. And I love it so much I want to read it. Because it illustrates the point of the significance of the fact that God became one of us. The man and the bird. The man to whom I'm going to introduce you to was not a Scrooge. He was a kind, decent, mostly good man. Generous to his family, upright in his dealings with other men. But he just didn't believe all that incarnation stuff, which the churches proclaim at Christmas time. It just didn't make sense, and he was too honest to pretend otherwise. He just couldn't swallow the Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. By the way, there's probably a lot of folks, if they were honest, would share that thought. Perhaps some of you here today. I'm truly sorry to distress you, he told his wife, but I'm not going with you to church this Christmas Eve. He said he'd feel like a hypocrite, that he'd much rather just stay at home, but that he would wait up for them. And so he stayed and they went to the midnight service. Shortly after the family drove away in the car, snow began to fall. He went to the window to watch the flurries getting heavier and heavier and then went back to his fireside chair and began to read his newspaper. Minutes later, he was startled by a thudding sound. Then another. And then another. Sort of a thump or a thud. At first he thought someone must be throwing snowballs against his living room window. But when he went to the front door to investigate, he found a flock of birds huddled miserably in the snow. They'd been caught in the storm and in a desperate search for shelter had tried to fly through his large landscape window. Perhaps you've experienced that, birds trying to get in through your window. <coughs> well, he couldn't let the poor creatures lie there and freeze. So he remembered the barn where his children's stable were pony. That would provide a warm shelter if he could direct the birds into it. Quickly, he put on a coat, galoshes, tramped through the deepening snow to the barn. He opened the doors wide and turned on a light, but the birds did not come in. He figured food would entice them. So he hurried back to the house, fetched some breadcrumbs, Sprinkled them in the snow, making a trail to the yellow-lighted, wide-open doorway of the stable. But to his dismay, the birds ignored the breadcrumbs and continued to flap around helplessly in the snow. He tried catching them. He tried shooing them into the barn by walking around, waving his arms. Instead, they scattered in every direction except into the warm, lighted ball. And then he realized that they were afraid of him. To them, he reasoned, I'm a strange and terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me. That I'm not trying to hurt them, but to help them. But how? Because any move he made tended to frighten them, confuse them. They just would not follow. 
They would not be led or shooed because they were afraid of him. If only I could be a bird. He thought to himself. And mingle with them. And speak their language. Then I could tell them not to be afraid. Then I could show them the way to the safe. Warm. To the safe warm barn. But I would have to be one of them. So they could see. And hear. And understand. At that moment, the church bells began to ring. The sound reached his ears above the sounds of the wind, and he stood there listening to the bells. Listening to the bells pealing the glad tidings of Christmas. And he sang to his knees. God the Son accomplished by becoming a man. He accomplished our problem of sin. Because He became a man. He was a perfect example of holiness for us to follow. He understood our problems and our sorrows and our brokenness and our hopelessness. Because He became one of us. He gets it. Whatever it is that is hurting you, He gets it. Because it was so necessary for the baby to be born. To become a human being. <coughs> He accomplished forgiveness because He became a man. He overcame temptation because He became one of us. He became a man. Therefore, He knows and understands all of the experiences of man. Number three, the virgin birth teaches us the difficult and unpleasant lessons and experiences that we may have of reproach, even shame and disgrace. Let's go back to the story, and I'll wrap it up. <coughs> Mary was a virgin. She was engaged. Now, at this time, in this culture, engaged couples didn't live together. They did not have sex. She was a pure, holy virgin. Joseph was a just man and a fair man. They were engaged. They did not live together by law. Unfaithfulness, listen, unfaithfulness was treated as adultery and punishable by death. Things have changed a bit. <coughs> Yet, she became pregnant. A cloud of suspicion and scandal hung over Mary. People saw an unwed mother who was pregnant. They had only one, one possible explanation.
what would you have done if you were Joseph? And you know you weren't the father. What would you have done? God sent an angel to Joseph and Mary to comfort them and to give them peace and to give them hope. But I wonder if other people understood. I wonder if other people saw her. I wonder what they thought. You know what they thought. You know what they thought. There are words. There's judgment that people had for this little girl. It was a fulfillment of prophecy and a great blessing from God to Joseph and Mary. It was also a source of serious misunderstanding and scorn for others. Shame and disgrace for Mary and Joseph and their family. There may be times when you experience such emotions. Shame. Disgrace. Pain. People judging you. It hurts. Similar emotions. When others may not understand what we're going through. It was complicated situation for this young girl and her fiance. But God was at work bringing all of these details together to make this the most unusual, amazing, special birthday in the history of mankind. If you're a Christian, a Christ follower, a disciple, whatever terminology you're comfortable with, then you have experienced a very special birth. Amen. A spiritual birth. You've, you've come alive because the power of God and the Holy Spirit doing a work, a changed work in your life. We call it salvation. Other words, new life through Jesus. Others may not understand your new birth. They may look at you funny. Oh, but they all carry their Bible all fanatic and going to church all the time. They may not understand what it means to follow Christ. Until perhaps they experience it themselves. Some may never understand. And that's okay. <coughs> How do you think Mary felt when they looked at her? And God the Holy Spirit comforted her and said, Mary, it's okay. They don't understand. It's okay if people judge you. They don't understand. Your Heavenly Father understands. You may even be considered a fool by some for following Christ. Christ was treated this way. He was in the world, so He under Whatever emotion that you struggle with, whatever vice, whatever challenge that you have in your life, He understands because He became a man. Come on. We should expect no people if we're followers. We're aliens in this world. We're pilgrims. This ain't home. And Jesus understands. So it's okay. It's okay when you feel like people are judging you and they don't understand what it means to follow Christ and take a stand and love the Word of God and trust and follow and believe. It's okay. 
And it's all okay because of this very special birth. Let me close by giving you a summary and an application. Something to take home with you as we start moving toward Christmas. Christ's entrance into the world was a miracle. No one has ever been born as He was. This was a miracle that began a life of miracles. The lessons from it are important and practical for us today. They matter. You need to know the story of Christmas. From the virgin birth, we learn that the Scriptures can be trusted. We learn that Christ loves us enough to become one of us. We learn that to become our example, our Savior and our friend, He had to come this way. Being God's child and servant may often result in misunderstanding and even embarrassment. That's part of being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Let me close by asking you this question. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? Is He the baby in a manger? Is He the young man that grew physically and emotionally and spiritually? Is He the man that when He became around 30 years of age, He started walking from place to place on this earth, revealing His holiness as God, performing miracles and, and touching lives? Is He the one that just a couple years later was tried illegally and hated and cursed and abused and killed and hung on a cross and buried in the grave. Who is Jesus to you? I present this to you. He came to be your Lord and your Savior, Jesus Christ. He came to be your King of kings. He came to be not only your King and your Lord, but your friend that you can spend time with and talk to in a real way. That's His desire. He's more than just a little baby. And it's important for us to know the story of His birth. Why don't you bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to pray with us today. You know, the question I just presented to you, who is Jesus to you, is the most important question you'll ever have to deal with. Because one day, Every knee will bow Amen. and proclaim that this little baby really is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Every knee will bow. Amen. My friend, wouldn't it be better to bow today than someday in judgment? So I'm asking you, if you've never knelt before this King, Maybe today's your day. Maybe today's the day that you come and you say, Lord, I acknowledge you. This little baby that came to this earth to die for me and make a way for me and, and pardon my sins. Lord, I acknowledge you today as Lord of my life. I worship you today. I surrender myself to you as my Lord. Maybe this is your day. And perhaps you've done that. Perhaps you know Him as your Savior. There was a time when you knelt in your heart and you repented and said, Lord, help me, save me, forgive me. 
then your soul is secure. But my friend, I must tell you the rest of the story. He wants to be more than that. He wants to be your friend, your colleague, your helper, your encourager. That is His desire. He wants to walk with you and cry with you and laugh with you. He loves you that much. Would you let this baby into your life today? Father, I don't understand the love that caused you to send your son here. I don't understand that love. But God, as, as best I know how, I accept that love today. I accept it. Thank you for sending God to this earth to be a bird like us. Thank you for shining us the light and showing us the way to hope. God, thank you that we don't have to be lonely. We don't have to be alone. Thank you. Thank you that you understand all of my pain. All of my disappointment. Thank you for the hope that you give us. So Lord, would you help us these next few days as we think about Christmas and all of those happy things. God, reveal to us a real Christmas this year. And may it be life changing. Thank you for this little baby. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. We're going to have a great month. It's going to be a great time together. Thank you for coming today. If you give money to the Lord, you, you don't give it to the church. Don't give money to this preacher. Give it to, to the Lord through this church. Put it in there. Have a great week. We love you. Hopefully we'll see you tonight. God bless.